Kia ora everyone, my name's Mel and today I am going to do part one of our breastfeeding session um, called Why the Fuss About Breastfeeding? So I do want to make this um, video inclusive for anybody that is planning to breastfeed, um, also family, friends, nurses, anyone that you can think of that would benefit from this video, feel free to send it to them. Now, having three kids at home and being in lockdown, I may get interrupted, um, but that is life. So we'll just carry on and see how we go. So um, I will do different parts of uh, the sessions. I've got it all in front of me so that I don't go off on a tangent because I often do that. So with me having it in front of me, I will try and stick to, to what I'm supposed to be saying. So to start with, uh, we've got Ministry of Health, World Health Organization and UNICEF all recommend to that the baby breastfeeds within one hour of being born and um, exclusively breastfeeding for the first six months. So that is only breast milk and um, any medications that your baby may be on um, for the first six months, then adding on solids from then on. Um, carrying on breastfeeding for up to a year or more, says the Ministry of Health, or up to two years or more, um, World Health Organization. So what is in breast milk that makes it so amazing? So breast milk has fats, proteins, carbs, vitamins, minerals, water in the early days. So the early milk we'll call it colostrum. So this is what we call the liquid gold. And you might see some of it in the last trimester of pregnancy. If you give a wee squeeze, you'll see some of that. It's usually a yellow color, but it can be any color. It's usually quite thick as well. It's very low in volume, so when your baby is born, their kidneys are not mature enough to handle large volumes of fluid. So the small amounts of colostrum that you make for your baby are perfect for the baby's kidneys and perfect for your baby's tummy. So at this stage when the baby's born, approximately, your baby's tummy is the size of this wee marble, which isn't very big. So I think sometimes um, when we start off breastfeeding, we think, oh, I've hardly got any colostrum, how is that possibly going to feed my baby? But it does, so rest, it does, rest assured, um, this is your baby's tummy, okay? So um, with the colostrum, so you're going to have the colostrum from about once the baby's born up until about day three or four, okay? So um, there's massive amounts of antibodies in this colostrum. So these are proteins that fight against viruses and bacteria, the bad bugs that, that might come in contact with your baby. So the colostrum sets like a foundation in your baby's intestines and it stops these bad bugs from from getting absorbed in the baby's intestines protecting them from from those germs it also um, is amazing at feeding the good bacteria that is in your baby's tummy so we need good bacteria to fight off the bad bacteria so this colostrum helps with that as well this all works together to help the baby's immune system the other awesome thing that colostrum does is it acts as a laxative. So you may remember we had talked about the meconium, that big, thick, black, tarry first poo for the first one or two days, and then it will start changing colour. So what all that colostrum does, even in small amounts, it will enable all that to be passed. And what we want to be seeing is one poo in the first 24 hours, so that black, black, tarry poo. One, one of them, first 24 hours. So, and then we're kind of looking for about three for the second day. And then these will increase over the coming days. So first off, the poo will be black. The more you feed your baby, the more that this poo is gonna transition. It's gonna sort of go greeny, browny, then eventually, eventually yellow, like mustard seed yellow, breast sort of feeding milk nappy. Um, at about day five to seven. So we want to see the black poo changing um, by about day three to more of a brownie, brownie color, okay? It's really important to keep an eye on what's happening in your baby's nappies. And that gives us a real indication that baby's getting enough colostrum. The other thing is um, keeping, yeah, keeping an eye on the poo, but also the wet nappies as well. So we would expect one wee in the first 24 hours, then we'd want two wees on the second day, three wees on the third day, four on the fourth, fifth on the fifth, six on the sixth day, and seventh 
seven, on the seventh day we want about seven wet nappies and from about a week old there might be seven eight nine wet nappies um so at about day three or four your tummy your baby's tummy now is a little bit bigger that it's usually meant to be a walnut shell i don't have a walnut shell in my house so this is what i've been able to gather for this um video during lockdown so um well it's a little bit bigger than that marble so it's um imagine that's like a, a walnut shell size so at about day three or four your milk will start coming in so we kind of call that a transitional milk so it's still mixed in with the colostrum but it starts becoming a little bit more milky so um yeah you'll you'll, you'll notice a normal process of full breath um, during that time so it will feel quite full some women don't notice it um, but that should settle within 24 hours it's a totally normal process that's meant to happen so at around that time you will notice um, increasing volume from colostrum now to your transitional milk so a bit more um, a bit more runnier not as thick um, and about from day 11 onwards you, we call mature milk so it's um, no colostrum left in that milk anymore so, um, just looking at my notes, making sure that I stay on track. So, everyone's breast milk is different to someone else's. And, you know, it's always changing depending on the weather. So, on a hot day, there'll be a more of a water um, volume. And, it, you know, it depends. At night time, it changes as well. So, it's always ever-changing and it's a perfect, perfect food for your baby. So by about a week old, your baby's tummy is now about a golf ball. So I found this. And um, by about six weeks, this is quite big. This is um, a normal size tennis ball, but it looks quite big to me. But about six weeks onwards, um, about the size of a tennis ball. And you know, as an adult, sometimes ours is as big as our fist, but it depends how much we've eaten um, as well. I mean, generally our stomachs are all the same size as an adult, but it, it can change as well. So why should I breastfeed? What's in it for me? So we'll talk about um, firstly why it's awesome for you to breastfeed, but and then we'll talk about why it's awesome for, for your baby as well. So there is a risk, um, a decreased risk of diabetes and um, breast and ovarian cancer. Um, it does increase the bonding and emotional attachment between you and the breastfeeding parent can reduce um, the risk of bone problems such as osteoporosis. Um, it can increase child spacing so that your cycle takes a wee while to return. So it can reduce your fertility if that's what you're looking at doing. It can help to improve um, a pre-pregnancy weight. I try, I try not to dwell too much on, on the whole pre-pregnancy weight thing because I feel like your body sort of never really goes back to exactly how it was so um, it's different for everyone isn't it it can help decrease an anxiety um, decrease anxiety and enhance calmness and that's to do with the breastfeeding hormones but we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next part it doesn't cost you anything as well uh, what I like about it is for the first six months all you need to do when you're going out the door is take your breasts and your baby bag and your baby with you and that's all you don't need to worry about bottles and 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 trying to think ahead about okay where are you going to heat it up um and it and it makes it a little bit less stressful because you can pretty much breastfeed anywhere anytime which is really cool also another cool thing when you've got th three children like me it's a good opportunity to say I've just got to go feed the baby and then you go and hide for quite a wee while and you get out of doing everything the cooking and the cleaning and things like that so that's another bonus as well and you just sit back and relax with your baby just you and your baby so that are some of the, the the cool things about breastfeeding for yourself for your baby there are reduced risks of ear infections um, gastro severe lower respiratory infections Skin conditions like dermatitis, asthma, obesity, diabetes, apparently high performance and intelligent tests. Um, there has been some research done on that. Um, it's really good bonding for the baby. And um, the cool thing is, is that the breast milk is ever changing depending on what stage the baby is at and how they're growing and, and developing. 
so um, there are many more awesome reasons you might better think of more reasons for those that are watching um, why you what you found really helpful about breastfeeding and why it's so great but that is all for the first part of our video what are the fuss about breastfeeding so stay tuned for part two and I'll see you soon okay part two basic breast anatomy this is going to be quite short and simple um, I'll try and get a picture up on your screen but for now I'll just show you this little picture that I have here so you can see the ligaments here and the ribs and then these little clumpy bits here I call the alveoli okay and that's where the milk is stored and there's these muscle cells that contract these areas that squeeze the milk out so it's made and made and stored in there and then squeeze out from there with the help of hormones which we'll talk in the next part these are just little fat areas here and you've got the ligaments that help support the breast um, you'll notice during your pregnancy especially in the third trimester that your breast probably feeling a bit heavy um, the size and the color and the shape all changes as well so these little bits here are just the fat tissues here that surround it and then away from these alveoli um, are these little ducts so you sometimes have to about up to nine different ducts all coming out into the nipple area and surprisingly um, there's about five or more different channels or exit points or pores that come out of the nipple and that's where the milk comes out of I think sometimes we might think there's just one little area where the milk comes out of but it's not so so also not shown on this picture but hopefully if I can get um, the other one up although the other one doesn't really show it either but you will see on yourself maybe around your nipple you've got your areola and that's the sort of an area that goes quite dark and pigmented during pregnancy that's hormonal and you also might notice on the areola around your nipple that these little little bumpy bits and they are called the Montgomery glands and they secrete like an oily type fluid for lubrication and that's to help with your breastfeeding journey as well so um, think of your breasts as I guess in a simple way bunches of grapes milk is stored and made there then it gets squeezed out of there along the ducts out to the nipple areas where there's about five or six or seven different pores or exit points out of your nipple now um, don't be concerned about your breast size you know it's um it's not how big or how small your breasts are that determines your breastfeeding journey it's sort of like the storage capacity and we all have different storage capacities the other thing is um, that you might want to have a look at is how are your nipples on a cold day do they poke out are they easily um, do they easily come out because that makes um, a difference for your breastfeeding journey as well so if there's any concerns or you have any worries you should talk to your midwife before you have your baby and sort of have a breast assessment I suppose um, and talk about um, breastfeeding and expressing as well and before you have the baby much easier so that was short and simple following on from this how does breastfeeding actually happen that is for part three stay tuned okay so I guess we need to talk about now how does breastfeeding actually happen there's two major hormones involved so this picture this is me and my second born when he was a baby um, visiting me at work on my lunch break so basically this picture is explaining the letdown reflex so one baby goes to the breast stimulating the nerves at the nipple and the areola and this sends a message to the brain two the brain oh realizes this and releases oxytocin the love hormone you might remember from our labor and birth talk and prolactin into the bloodstream so then what happens is the oxytocin is what makes those muscle cells the ones that we talked about earlier surrounding the alveoli they squeeze and the milk is pushed out into the ducts and out the nipple and prolactin is the hormone that actually makes the milk so the more times your baby is at the breast the more milk you will make so pretty cool huh so with the whole let down reflex um some women might feel that happening there's um might feel a tingling or leaking milk out the other side 
um, and especially during those first few weeks after having a baby there is a bit of uterus contracting which is completely normal because the uterus does get down to a very small size um, by about six to nine weeks which is why your midwife um, regular checks your tummy when you're in hospital and also when you're at home um, so sometimes you might be out and about without your baby or with your baby and you might think about your baby um, and the baby might cry and then you have a bit of a letdown and milk um, soaks your t-shirt so which is why sometimes we wear um, some breast pads some people don't need to so um, the other thing about oxytocin it is the love hormone uh, that's hubby trying to um, distract me so with um, the oxytocin if we need the oxytocin um, to bring that milk out to the baby and we it is a love hormone what do you think might happen if we are in a lot of pain or we're feeling anxious or we we feel quite embarrassed about breastfeeding in front of other people or in a situation then it may not flow that the way that we might need it to so breastfeeding is um really not just for you to focus on but for the whole family and friends and everyone around you just to give you that support and love that you are needing during this time so as i said before the more that your baby goes to the breast the more prolactin levels are made which is especially higher during the night time so just think when you've got out for the sixth or the eighth time in the night and you're exhausted just remind yourself that um you know the more milk that you're making during this time the other thing about feeding lots at night time is it can um yeah reduce your fertility for some quite some time and those that don't breastfeed very much maybe their babies are sleeping through the night a lot of the time their, their periods will re return um quite quickly compared to those that are still breastfeeding um years later like me so um you need to be removing the milk at the breast in order for milk to be made so if for any reason you're missing feeds or you've gone out or um, you've decided for someone else to do the feeds during the night there is a bit of a missed feed so I think during the first six weeks um, as exhausted as you are um, feed 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 and just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel so how much should your baby feeding well we will talk about this a bit more later but generally your baby feeds eight at least eight times in a 24-hour period so this might be every hour every second hour every third hour and this is completely normal and I think as um, parents we we wonder why the baby is waking up so much is it me what have I done I'm failing here I don't have enough milk it's not keeping them sustained for long enough that's not true because as we as we know the the little tummies that these babies have depending on what age they are at um, they digest it and yes they get hungry again it's completely normal babies aren't meant to sleep for a long period or all night um, I think sometimes we feel that pressure that our baby should be doing that so this is where the family support and the friends support and the grandparents and the in-laws and everyone around you needs to have a realistic expectation of yes your baby is going to feed a lot that's just how it is it's, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you or your milk so in those early days of having a baby there will be that um, that first breastfeed within that first hour as we spoke about at the beginning so we really need to get um, get that a good foundation for breastfeeding and, and, and a good way to do that is to allow your baby to um, breast crawl now if you want to know more about that you can find it on YouTube but it's basically allowing your baby to find the breast um, themselves without you having to do too much so um, that all depends on the birthing process that you've had you know um, where there's been an assisted birth maybe the baby's in a bit of pain maybe you've had a cesarean as well which can affect um, milk supply and things like that um, also what drugs you may have had which can affect baby make them feel quite sleepy which we, we talked about in our pain relief session so I think um, we probably talk a little bit more about that later on but I think if you're in hospital um, and you are unsure about waking up your baby or your baby slept for a long time you're not sure what to do always ask for help this is what what we were all there for um, and also your midwife as well 
So how do you know your baby is getting enough milk? We will talk about that um, very shortly. The other thing that Ministry of Health will um, encourage is for your baby to sleep in the same room as you for at least six months. Um, even a year would be good, but it is um, at least six months. And having your baby close to you um, in their own sleeping space, um, you know, they kind of wake up to your rustling around and you wake up to their rustling around. Um, and it's really good for your breastfeeding journey as well. Okay. So, um, moving on to actually how to get your baby to the breast. Um, it should be easy, right? But it's not always. It's a learnt skill that you and your baby have to do. So we are going to talk about that in part four, how to get the baby on the breast. So I will see you there. Okay, welcome back. So we're at part four, how to get your baby to the breast. So I know that this is a part that most people want to know about, but it's really good to have all the other stuff that we've gone through first so that you have a bit of an understanding of how it all works. So um, this is the part that takes lots of patience and perseverance and um, you need, you know, your person um, there to be helping you out, whoever that might be. So um, this is why this video is aimed at everybody because I really want and I'm very passionate about promoting and supporting and protecting this, um, this wonderful art of breastfeeding. So grab your doll, this is mine, next to my, my little Alex who said he wants it right now while I need it. So um, he might come in here and try and get it off me. So um, this is my breast that I'm going to be using thanks to my mother who knitted this for me for my classes. So um, again it is a little bit different trying to video it's, it's much different um, it's yeah it's really different me videoing myself um, rather than being in front of a class because you know there's questions and um, it's just a little bit more hands-on a bit more interactive but uh, this is just how, how it is and we are in lockdown so I hope you find this helpful anyway. So remembering that we want baby on the breast within the first hour if possible. If by any chance that you are separated from your baby then um, your midwife will help you do some expressing okay to start that process. So um, I guess it depends on how your baby is born as well. Remembering when we talked about pain relief, the different drugs, um, the different ways your baby can be born, maybe um, your baby needed a little bit of help maybe some forceps, maybe cesarean, um, all this is to be taken into consideration um, and whether you've got any other health conditions prior to having having the baby and also how much bleeding you had afterwards can have an effect on your, on your breast milk supply as well. So um, remember we talked about the breast crawl, if you can YouTube that would be awesome if um, your baby can do that for the first feed. You might find after the baby's very first breastfeed that um, they sleep for a long period of time and that's quite normal as well just from the labour and the birth process as well. So I'm um, just making sure I'm reading my notes as I you know I go off on a little bit of a tangent. So um, I will at some stage try and put just a short wee video in between here of um, a baby latching but Ministry of Health website um, has so many great breastfeeding videos of babies latching and things like that. There's so much online that you can see but this is just a very um, simple and um, sort of general uh, session on the, on putting baby on the breast. So when babies are born they've got this rooting re reflex. If you touch the side of them, their face they'll go towards it right. So this is this enables us to um, get the baby on the breast that way. Also they have a sucking reflex so Remember the, um, the nipple is going to be all the way back to the top of their mouth. So when they've done a few sucks and they get enough colostrum or milk in the back of their throat, then their reflex is they'll automatically swallow it. Um, so while we are talking about that actually, if you get your tongue and push it right, right, right to the very back. So you've got a hard bit in your mouth and then it goes soft at the back. So if you have a go now goes all the way back. So that is where your the, the nipple and or the breast tissue is going to go all the way back. Um, 
a soft palette in baby's mouth. So they're not just going to be hanging on the nipple because that's not going to make any milk. Well, it might make a little bit of milk transfer over, but not enough for baby to get enough and to be able to pass that meconium and to do a wee and to put on weight. So really, there's quite a lot of breast tissue that's going to be going in the baby's mouth. They use their tongue and the suction to pull it right back. So have another go, get your tongue and pull it all the way back, back, back along the hard top of your mouth until you feel a ridge. And then right up there is where the end of this nipple is going to sit in the baby's mouth. So visualize that and I'll try and show you a little something as well. So let's start again the rooting reflex. Baby has it, they go towards they open their mouth, right? It's an instinctive behavior that does go away at a certain age. Then the sucking reflex, when the nipple is right at the back of their soft palate, there's enough milk there, enough fluid, and then they'll swallow it, okay? Then your clever baby starts swallowing. So, um... Just, yeah, just keep that in mind of how far baby has to go back. So um, there are many ways, different positions to breastfeed, but I'm just going to keep things simple. Um, it's like the cradle hold. Um, so we'll just go like that. So grab your baby. So most of the time in my classes, I'll get everyone to show me how they're going to latch their baby on. Most of the time, they will, on the side that they're breastfeeding, they'll put the baby's head in the crook of their arm and maybe try and attach baby that way. In the early stages, that's not so great. They're not going to get a good latch on that way. So my thing is, so the breast that you're going to breastfeed off, you're going to take the opposite hand and put it behind baby's neck. So you kind of got a thumb and a finger just under the ear. So if you've got something, a toy or something to, to practice with, which would be a really good idea, to get comfortable with handling your breasts and positioning babies. So this is my breast here. So babies don't like their heads being pushed around okay D don't put your hand on the head though they won't like it and it just it won't work out so we're gonna go if you can see there to the very crook of the neck here so um, with their tummies we're just gonna go tummy to tummy if your baby is not tummy to tummy so say your baby is pointing out this way they've literally got to turn their neck all the way just to get on the breast that's not going to work out either so we really want a nice alignment head and neck in a, in a great alignment okay so we've got our breast here so with our other hand i know it, it seems that you should be doing this way right but let's just try this way so this hand under here you're going to get this hand here and we're just going to shape your breast a little bit i don't know what size shape you've got of your breast but just grab your breast and we're sort of just going to be holding under here. We want baby to open their mouth, okay? Because some babies are really sleepy and they're not going to open their mouth. And it's a bit tricky, okay? This is the patience and the perseverance part for the first few weeks. It just takes a, a wee bit of time to get the hang of things. So I'll just go on the side a little bit. So we're going to use the nipple. And we're going to run it over baby's nose and over their mouth. And we're hoping that will be enough for baby to open their mouth. If they only open their mouth a little bit and you try putting them on, do you think that you're going to have enough breast tissue in there to have a good latch? Probably not, and it's probably going to hurt. And we'll talk about sore nipples and how that can really affect um, baby's feeding and yourself um, a bit later on. Okay, so we've got baby here behind the neck. We're going to use your top of your nipple along the nose and the mouth. Okay, all of a sudden, baby's mouth goes wide, 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 wide. And so then you think, oh, now's a good time to put the baby on. But by the time you put the baby on the breast, their mouth has shut a little bit again, and they're only on the nipple. We don't want that. So what do you have to do? You have to be a little bit quick about it. No mucking around, honestly. So mouth opens wide, push the baby on. Okay, pushing 
I don't know if I should use that term, but I do. Some people say, bring your baby to you. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to bring your baby to you, but you're going to do it smartly without mucking around. Okay, let's try again. So, you got your breast. You're going to wait for the mouth to open, and you're going to bring it on. Okay, you're not going to bring yourself to your baby. That's not going to work out. I do see some people do it. Sometimes we don't really think about it, but always, always bring your baby to you. So, bring your baby on. Oh, my goodness. They're latched on. So, the nose should be free, not like smothered into the breast. And most of your areola is going to be taken up um, by the bottom lip. And the lips are going to be sort of out. So, you don't... Mm -hmm, mm -mm, that's no. You want your lips out. Like they're eating a big burger, okay? So, let's just say... Your baby's on and they with your colostrum with the small volumes remembering um they might have to do a few sucks before they do a swallow quite normal remember the reflex has to go to the back that back of their mouth once there's enough there then they'll swallow so you might hear a suck and another suck and then another suck and then you'll hear a and you might see it and you might see the jaw move as well so this is really important to keep an eye out because when your midwife is looking after you, if you are in the hospital, there will be a feeding chart to fill out. And, and we like to know, you know, how was the latch? Um, you know, and, and we, we want to hear that there's, there's been swallows and there's been not just sucking because there's some babies will just hop on the breast and suck, usually when they haven't, aren't latched on properly. Um, but we want to hear the swallows and also on the on the chart we want to know what sort of nappies because we're you know we're looking at the output as well okay sorry my phone died um so where were we babies on the breast okay so you know that baby's sucking and swallowing at the same time and there's no pain and there's no clicking noises and funny noises that are going on um might be a bit tender though because breastfeeding can be a bit tender it usually if it is painful, it normally goes away, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. So um, just give it some time. And if it's con it continues to be painful, you need to get some further support. So your nurse and your midwife who's looking after you if you're in the hospital or um, when your midwife comes to visit you at home. Okay, so say that you've got baby on and you're quite happy. You've got tummy to tummy. Baby's got a really good amount of the areola on the bottom. Um, the nose is clear and everything's going well and, and, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. It only took 10 times to get the baby on. Um, so now now you can bring your arm underneath, right? And oh, you do it really carefully because it's like, oh my gosh, it took me so long to get this baby on. And then you're just going to, you feel like you can't relax, but you're just going to sit back and relax now and just oh, take a breather. Okay, you need to make sure you do that as much as possible when you're breastfeeding. Grab those quiet moments together while you can. I do find that if you're watching TV or you're on your phone, baby can slip off and you haven't actually noticed, and then your nipple gets sore, and then it just can lead to a few few issues and dramas after. So if you can on those first few weeks, as much as possible, really just focus on breastfeeding and attaching your baby and just soaking up those lovely hormones um, and and just have that time together while you can. So usually when baby's had enough, maybe who knows how long your baby's going to feed for. Again, it depends on your storage, but you know, it might be 20 minutes, half an hour as baby gets older, or or if you think the baby's still hungry, then you might offer the other side as well. Um, usually, um, you know, once your milk comes in and, and they have, and they guzzle a lot more, they usually get a little bit milk drunk and they'll just kind of flop off and they'll just just be completely out to it and it's just those moments are the best and they just oh so lovely um okay so say that you were busy doing something or maybe looking at your phone or reading i don't i haven't even read a book really since i've had you know my babies because you know the brain capacities i doubt that you will be reading but you might um you've noticed oh starting to hurt now i've got to put baby back on so you're not going to just pull your baby off all right because if you pull your baby off that suction that that baby's got with the tongue and lifting one at the back your nipple is going to go along with that baby when you pull the baby off and that's not ideal so to break the seal say you've got clean hands right keep your nails as short as possible 
And what you're going to do is you're just going to get your little finger and you're just going to put it in the corner of their mouth and you're going to pop that seal, that suction comes off and then you can safely take baby off, okay? As they get a bit older, like quite a bit bigger, you can sometimes just pull on, on their cheek and that undoes the seal and they can come off. But when they're quite little, you, you really do have to physically, in the mouth, break the seal. Alright, and then you'll just re-latch on the baby again. Okay, it doesn't matter how many times it takes, as long as baby is on and there's no pain or funny noises and you can hear sucking and swallowing. Okay, so um, have, your, have your water bottle also with you. It's very thirsty work breastfeeding and it's really hungry work as well. So, you know, 500 more calories per day when you're breastfeeding. So try and make them nourishing um, meals and snacks if you can. I think the more sugar that we have, it makes us more tired. Um, that could just be me, but... So if your baby isn't latching well, this is going to lead to a few issues and we'll talk about the breastfeeding challenges um, coming up, but um, we need the latch to be well and truly um, on there properly because of the nerve endings and we want that oxytocin um, reflex to be happening, okay, like we talked about earlier. So, you know, tummy to tummy. Get the baby's mouth to open, get them on as soon as possible, no mucking around. When you're happy, slip your arm down, rest and relax, okay? Uh, the other common position is um, the rugby hold, or I was trained in Australia and we called it the football hold. So um, you've got your breast here, but you're going to go underneath your arm. Um, this might take a little bit, you might, might need someone to help you with with the body of the baby and maybe propping up with some pillows but it's just the same thing just going under the arm some babies will have a preference for side if you're finding that baby won't go on the other side very well you can sort of just trick the baby by making them stay on that way um, and putting them on, on on like this or okay say that this side is their favorite and they don't want to go on that side then you just slip them over in the, in the rugby hold this way you're still going to use your nipple to open your mouth and bring them on. And you kind of have a pillow under here just to, to rest like that. Okay, and breastfeeding can take up to half an hour on each side. Like, it's going to be different for everyone. You might find when your milk comes in, they guzzle a lot more. There's a lot more swallows, um, a lot less sucking and more swallows. And you might find that they just go off into their, into their drunk milk, milk drunk sort of phase. You might notice that a little bit more too. Okay, so the other thing is always try and go skin to skin as much as possible. You know, limit the amount of visitors that you're going to have at home um, so that you can be comfortable with nothing on the top and baby can just be in a nappy because it really, really does help the breastfeeding um, journey that you're going to be on. So as much as possible skin to skin. And it may take up to 10 times to latch your baby on well. Don't be afraid if there's any pain to unbreak the seal, take baby off and try again, okay? So, yeah, hopefully I'll show you a wee picture just to show, basically all it's showing is a baby hanging off the nipple and a baby on the breast. So I think you know now that the baby is not gonna just go on the nipple. We need to go all the way back to the top of, behind the top of the mouth. Okay, so they are the main ways to hold. Check out that Mama Araha book. Um, it will show you some more positions as well. So, um, the last thing I want to mention in this particular area, we're not quite finished here, we're getting there, but we're not quite finished, um, is, you know, after a wee while, your baby does see breastfeeding as not just a source of food, but actually a source of comfort and, like, nurturing and attachment and bonding so, you know, when your baby is waking up a lot in the night, maybe it's not always to do with hunger, but it's it's a way for them to feel safe and loved and, and, and the breastfeeding helps your baby go back to sleep super, super easy. So, you know, sometimes there's a bit of pressure around about sleep training or getting your baby to be able to sleep through the night. It just might not be biologically normal for them to sleep through the night. So you might be trying to do everything that you can, but we just have to be a bit patient. Um, with this parenting thing um, and in the end in the end is all, all worth it so I just have to hang in there 
So our next part is how do I know if baby is getting enough milk? So I will see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Part five, how do I know if my baby is getting enough milk? So this is a common question, isn't it? So um, the, the part of us that want to always know the amount that, that the baby is getting. And, and a lot of women decide they, they don't want to breastfeed because they need to know the amounts. But your breasts um, provide all the nutrition that your baby needs, okay? So how do we know? Well, we earlier we talked about the amount of poos and wheeze. Do you remember? If we want one poo in the first 24 hours, then it will be black and sticky. The more we feed, the more stools will be passed and they'll change from a black to sort of a browny green and then eventually a yellowy mustard colour around day five. So um, wheeze, we want to wee every day. Sometimes, um, by the, you know, by the time they get to a week old, we want at least seven. But, you know, less than a week we want, depending on the day. So, you know, for that day two, we want two wees. For the day three, we want three wees and that sort of thing. So the output is really important and that's why we ask you all the time about wheeze and poos because it is a sign that baby is getting enough. And sometimes we'll ask to look at the nappy as well. It's not that we don't believe you, but we, we like to see for ourselves um, what that baby's doing and if that stool is transitioning, if they're in that first week. So um, we need to figure out the hunger signs, right? So babies, um, they want what they want right away. They don't want to wait around for it, right? So some early hunger signs are maybe they're starting to stir a little bit in their cot um, and and they might be trying to find their hand and suck on it. And, and you know, they're not too too frantic at the moment. They, they're sort of just stirring and, and, and looking like, oh, I'm going to start waking up, I'm going to be hungry soon. So that's a, a good early sign of getting baby ready to be put on the breast. Okay. Sorry, my phone uh, got full of my videos. So, talked about the early stages, start getting baby ready. They might even poke out their tongue and start stirring. So then they start to get a bit restless and a bit more frantic and a bit more fussy, like they're starting to move around a little bit more. That's okay, you really need to start feeding them then. The late sign is crying because then you have to settle the baby before they'll go actually on the breast. So when they're a bit older, usually when they're crying, you just put them on the breast and they'll go on. But when they're little, little, you know, just born the first few weeks, you do kind of need to settle them a little bit. You might have to go skin to skin if you're not already doing so before you latch that baby on. So um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, the second night. Um, after the baby's been born, it's usually quite a busy night. They they feed all night and you decide, right, I don't want to breastfeed anymore. Give this baby some formula or something like that. Um, but they don't actually need it. What they're doing is they just must instinctively know that um, our milk is coming in and they're just trying to help us with that. Okay, so the more that we feed the baby and a lot on the second night is a very sleepless night, um, then, then you'll... you'll Maybe the next day or later in that the third day or going into the fourth day, your milk will come in. So it's it's all for a purpose. So please don't be, um, you know, distressed or feel feel like you're failing in any way on the second night because they do have a frantically frenzy feeding night usually. Um, the other thing is, so the output... Um, feeding the baby, with, going with their hunger signs is really important. But the other thing is what we talked about earlier, positioning that baby and latching that baby on well so that proper milk transfer can happen. Okay, so you want to be able to hear the swallows and see them as well. And um, if you're not sure, just ask your midwife and, and they'll better sit with you. And, and, and sometimes we sit with women throughout a feed and, and determine, okay, how many swallows are they actually doing during that time? Um, another way to know is if your baby is putting on weight. So sometimes day three, your midwife might weigh your baby. It's quite quite normal to lose some um, weight by that stage. So don't be alarmed if baby's lost some weight on day three, but they normally do put it back on by a week old. The other thing is that, you know, over time babies will be a bit more alert. So if they are feeding well and they... Um, are developing and growing well they will start to have more alert periods in the first week pretty much all they do is feed 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 sleep feed feed sleep 
and carry on. Um, so eventually they do get a bit more alert and active and you can do a bit more communication with them. Um, and then you can really tell that, yes, you know, this baby's happy and thriving and putting on weight and weighing and pooing. So we ask all those questions usually, um, you know, in the home visits and during your hospital stay as well. And that is how we know that your baby is getting enough milk. Over time, you will just learn to trust your body. Um, you'll know the signs that, you know, the baby is weighing and pooing well and you'll just feel really confident and it just may take some time. So bring all your support people around you, ask lots of questions and if you are struggling, please let someone know. Okay, coming up, part six, breastfeeding challenges. See you soon. Okay, we are getting towards the end and I'm slightly rushing through it because the sun is fading and um, my kids will probably run in here at any minute. So, some challenges that you might have with your baby. Um, you might have a sleepy baby. So, I mean, this sometimes happens, but at all, all challenges, at all moments, skin to skin, baby and nappy, you without your top and your bra on um, for their attachment and they can start sort of rooting around and, and hopefully waking themselves up. If they're still not waking well or not feeding well, you need to let your midwife know. Occasionally we do have to express some of your breast milk and give it to your baby to help them wake up a bit. The longer they go without milk, the sleepier that they'll get, okay? So generally when they're, you know, less than a week old, three hours is, is quite a long time to probably go without a feed. So if it, is, it is, if it has been quite a long time more than that, please do talk to your midwife so that you can get that baby feeding because we do want that meconium to be um, transitioning and we don't want them to get jaundice, you know, that yellow colour, which is quite normal um, in a baby, but we we want them to, you know, you know get rid of all the... Or the Billy Rubin is what we call it, but we need to be able to have enough milk and weeing and pooing to be able to get rid of it. So, um, and they need to be awake enough for it as well. So if any questions, tell your midwife, okay? And watch out for the sucking and the swallowing and the nappy as usual. Okay, sore nipples is a majorly common reason why some mums don't want to breastfeed anymore and they might stop their breastfeeding journey short, but persevere, hang in there. This is why it's really important to always have your baby latched on properly, okay? Tummy to tummy, get them on um, nose to nipple sometimes we would say, big wide open mouth, um, and there are some great pictures in the Mama Awaha book and also in the Ministry of Health, those videos as well, um, for latching your baby so that you know that your baby's on well. Okay, another reason why your um, nipples might not might be sore there's sometimes you can get thrush and they can get quite itchy or there's like this burning sensation and baby's mouth might have some white coating in it as well so you both would need to be treated for that so tell your midwife the other reason is sometimes um in the cold women um have really painful nipples and they change color and they we call it like a vasospasm so for Raynard. and so please do let your midwife know if you're struggling with that you might need to have some warmers on as well to keep your nipples warm the other reason could be that you're not breaking the seal when you take baby off um, but it is mainly mainly to do with positioning and um, latching that baby on as well but there you know the other reasons as well so Another one is engorgement. So remember when your milk comes in, it's quite normal to feel like they are really full, ready to burst, but then within 24 hours they should settle down. So engorgement at any other time is when your breasts feel really firm and, and tender. So um, this could be due to maybe you missed a feed, maybe you went out shopping, normally the time that you would feed your baby. Maybe your baby slept longer at night and you're feeling really engorged the next, um, in the next morning. Sometimes women feel more engorged when they start solids around six months. Um, what else? They're uh, the main ones. So what we don't want to do is, you know, for it to lead to a breast infection or anything like that. So feed your baby as soon as possible. Cabbage leaves can help with that engorgement and cool cloths as well. So moving on. Another challenge can be a blocked milk duct. So that's like a sort of a hard little bit that's along your duct. So 
remember that all the ducts that were traveling from the alveoli to the nipple say that there's it's blocked and there's um it's stopping the milk flow so if it's not coming out then it's just going to stay there and we call it like milk stasis so what can happen with the milk a blocked duct also is a breast infection because it sits in there and it's not flowing so if you find that you've got lumps and please check your breasts daily for lumps and also looking in the mirror for any redness and we'll talk about mastitis breast infection after this one so you might find a lump that you can feel like a pee pee lump and usually only in one breast and it kind of comes on gradually you might even have a little bit of red streaks with it and it could be a bit tender so um it, this usually could be could be could be because sometimes we when we're breastfeeding we have our fingers on our breast right and we're we're, we're pushing down on the duct and we're stopping that milk from flowing so that could be one just keep in mind that once you've got your baby on you can then move your arm underneath okay and relax and take that pressure off um, sometimes just really fatigue and stress, stress and exhaustion can um, can make that happen as well. Sometimes when you've got too much milk and the baby's not feeding enough, if you're expressing and using a pump, sometimes the wrong, um, we call it flange, the, the plastic bit that goes on the breast might not be the right size for you. Um, yeah, you could have missed a feed um, separation and positioning and attachment again. So what, oh, and also um, introduction of a dummy, you know, when your baby's not sleeping at night and you think introducing a dummy might be a good idea. Sometimes they're that busy sucking on the dummy that you're missing their feeding cues um, and then they've got milk, milk build up in the ducts as well. So what to do, just breastfeed as much as you can, try and massage the lump out if you can. Some women will find that leaning over their baby called gravity feed really helps as well. Have a lot of rest, which is really difficult to do when you've got a new baby. Um, also, check your your breastfeeding bra. It might be not the right size. Might be putting too much pressure on the ducts. And also, if you're carrying your baby a lot in a carrier, sometimes that can put pressure on as well. So just keep an eye on that. And skin to skin and fluids as much as possible. And um, maybe get your midwife, it's in the first six weeks, get your midwife to come and give you um, some advice and maybe refer to a lactation consultant that might come and do a home visit or Plunkett does them um, over Zoom. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was mastitis. Now where did I put mastitis? So mastitis can with the engorgement or the blocked ducts if the milk is not flowing properly and it's staying in there it can lead to um, mastitis so mastitis is basically ineffective milk removal really um, and infection so you can have mastitis without an infection so um, basically you would have a hot red area on your breast you might also have fevers, aches and pains, chills, and just feel really, really awful. So if you're unwell, most likely need antibiotics, okay? If you notice a red redness but you feel quite well, it may be that um, your midwife or your GP decides to wait for 24 hours before um, starting antibiotics, but you really do need to be improving in that 24 hours um, because we don't want a breast abscess um, where you have to get it drained and and things like that. The most important thing for mastitis is if you can stay in bed as much as possible and feed your baby um, on both sides as much as you can and fluids. Um, the other thing I just wanted to go over was alcohol. I know some people are desperately waiting for that first drink. The thing is with alcohol there isn't, it's like with pregnancy, there's no real safe um, amount to drink I suppose. I would really recommend you get the feed safe app for your phone it kind of takes into consideration your weight and your height and how um, fast you might metabolize the alcohol basically what you drink the baby drinks as well so if um, what you could do you if you really were desperate for a drink you would breastfeed before a drink and then um, the alcohol is usually in the breast milk about half well 
an hour to an hour and a half after that drink. So, um, and eat plenty while you, while you, if you had a drink as well. So you you'd probably plan ahead and express. Um, if you are sober enough to drive, you're usually okay to feed your baby as well. So the factors that affect how much alcohol gets into your breast milk, or it depends what drink you're having, how much of it is, and how much you've how much you've eaten as well. Um, you know, and how fast you drink it as as well. So we don't pump and dump breast milk anymore. That's just not not the um, advice. What you might have to do though, if you are fairly engorged and um, you've previously expressed for your baby and you've had a drink, you might just have to express a little bit just for relief. They do say that um, you know a lot of alcohol over time does um, decrease the milk supply and interrupt with the baby's sleep patterns and things like that. Um, and then long-term um, heavy alcohol use can can um, have effects on your baby's development. So check out the Feed Safe app and. Um, you can make an informed choice about what you're going to do. The other thing is smoking. Um, I know it's hard to stop smoking. We still want you to be breastfeeding if you're smoking. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't been able to quit, then breastfeeding is still better for your baby. So it just means you would feed your baby, and then you'd have a smoke, and then the nicotine is normally um, halved. In about what's about 90 minutes it takes the, the nicotine amount to halve in the system so but by then your baby might be ready for for a feed again just have to um, babies absorb nicotine through you you know your hands and your, and your body and things like that so you'd have to have a different jacket on and um, go go far far away from that baby because they can still um, you know from passive smoking um, just a quick word on safe sleep. So the safe, safe sleep guidelines are sleeping on their back at all times to keep their airways clear in their own bed, nice flat surface. Um, you need to be free from alcohol or drugs um, so that you don't accidentally you know, fall asleep or roll on your baby or something like that. So um, to be sort of in a, in a warmish type of temperature around, you know, 20 degrees, Ministry of Health recommends. And if you want to check to see if your baby is too hot or too cold, you just pop your hand down their neck um, and you can have a feel that way as well. Another thing is about car seats. Car seats are for cars and not for sleeping once you've stopped driving to where you're driving, just because of the position of their spine and their airways for long periods of time. So, um, also with the with the with the cot that they're in, you know, you don't want any pillows or toys in the cot with them. You want the um, the rails to be a specific um, amount apart. And usually, the cots in New Zealand are they have to reach the guidelines. So, unless you've you've got a cot that's been handed down um, from generations and generations ago, you would want to change the mattress um, each time, okay? Because of the mold spores that can live in mattresses that you don't actually know about. Um, and yeah, it needs to be flat, flat surface, and the mattress has to kind of be um, really close to to the rails. We don't want gaps that that can fall into as well. Okay, we're coming to the end. We are nearly there. I will see you in a minute for part seven. Okay, we are so close to finishing here. So um, where can I get help? So part seven is where do I get help? So please, please, please talk to people about how you're feeling you've got your family and your friends and your midwife your gp you've got plunkett um you've got your breastfeeding peer counselor as well so the free apps i would recommend for your phone are the mama over half phone app the feed safe app positive pregnancy app which is really awesome for mental well-being we've got the can breastfeed website that's for canterbury ministry of health have so many good videos on breastfeeding also um the Global Health Media Project, there's a video on there for, for latching the baby to the breast. If you can, if you have a baby shower, get people to do an IOU for cleaning and cooking for as many weeks as you possibly can. That will make things really helpful for your breastfeeding journey. 
Um, and then my last part of it is um, anything that I've forgotten, which is quite likely. So I haven't talked about the milk storage. So express milk can be out at room temperature for four hours. You can have your express milk in the fridge at the back for two days. If you've got a freezer that's just on top of your fridge, um, you can do three to six months. And if it's a big chest freezer, it can be six to 12 months. I just wanted to make a note about vitamin D. Breast milk isn't high in, in vitamin D. So if you are low in vitamin D during your pregnancy, it's most likely your baby will be. Um, if your baby's of dark skin, born in the winter months or born early, most likely need some supplements for vitamin D and your midwife or your GP can do that for you. Um, there was one other thing that I didn't talk about was about postnatal depression. So normally you get the baby blues when your milk comes in about day three, day four, there's a lot of tears. Depression is um, that sort of feeling, but long lasting. So uh, not going away, crying a lot, feeling like a failure, feeling anxious, not wanting to leave the house, um, just feeling not yourself. You might not really know that you're in that zone but other people might notice that about you which is why it's so important to have that family and friends um, around you. Your midwife might do a questionnaire whether you've got depression or not during your pregnancy and usually at six weeks after you've had the baby. So there is support out there for you, you just need to be able to talk, talk about it for some reason. We don't always want to talk about it and we just want to keep soldiering on because we think that we have to. But please, the more people that you have in your corner that are there um, supporting you, not just for your breastfeeding journey, but uh, on your parenting journey, um, that honestly, the, the easier that it will be, okay? And trying to get out for your daily walks and fresh air is really important as well. So pushing your baby in the pram or carrying them in the carrier as well. So that is all from me. Hubby has just messaged to say my time is up because this has taken quite a long time to put together. But I really hope that you've gained something out of it. And please share with anyone that you think might um, benefit from this. Um, and if you, the, those in my class, if you've got any questions, we're going to meet up for a Zoom um, at some stage during the week and have a chat. And I'll email you some things. But for anyone else, please check out all those resources that are available out there for you. There's plenty of videos on YouTube and online for you to get really comfortable and feel confident um, before you have your baby. Um, and if you're not planning to breastfeed, but you're a family member or a partner, this is really good for you to do, do some learning around it too, so you can help and support and be there. Okay, so it's goodbye from me and this baby. And um, I hope you enjoyed and let me know how you how you get on and I wish you all the best for your breastfeeding journey um, whatever that might look like for you so um, I just hope that you you go well and know that it is hard work but it is all worth it in the end okay see you later bye all right so now that you've had a, a ch child you'll be wondering what you can do to help so after a while you'll know you'll know what you got to do you know whether it be housework or tidying up or um, that sort of thing so you don't necessarily need to ask you need to fall into your role as running the household the the wife the the, the lady she's going to be breastfeeding breastfeeding all the time and sometimes all night so and you might um, think, you know, what, what what can I do? So, doing these jobs and running the household is is a good way to show that you you're, you're doing your bit. Another thing is, um, uh, you, you you might be at work all day and you come home and then um, think, well, I don't have to do anything because I've been at work, and then your partner she's at home and she thinks well it's your turn now but you're now you're a team so what i like to tell people is she's at home you're at work but now you're both at home so maybe uh you take the child for a little bit but then you're both there both doing stuff around the house so a lot of the time 
when the child is young, um, it'll be all about the baby, it'll be all about the feeding, and uh, <laughs> and yeah, that's what it's going to be like from for for the next wee while. So you can your your role, you can be there to, you know, not only keep things running, but um, support the woman, say they're doing a good job, and I don't know where to go from there. Um, 